Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Bloodborne. Here we are back at Yargul. I think it is time. It's time to take out the boss of this area. I think I've pretty much cleared out everything there is to do here. I got the Tenitrus. I picked up the... <coughs> well, that's pretty much it, the Tenitrus. That's what I was here for. So I think I've gotten all the Bloodstone chunks I can get. i turned turn down my TV a bit. So yeah, I think it's boss time. Oops. I'll take the teleport. I think that's the easiest path to the boss. Even though we don't have a couple of these dogs to deal with. I used the souls I got in the Hunter's Dream to buy more blood e not blood echoes, blood vials. I figured more healing items can never hurt. So yeah, I think it's time to take on the one reborn who I had kind of a tough time with on my first playthrough. Which is weird because apparently this is like not a tough boss at all. But you know, I do that sometimes that the tough bosses give me like no trouble and then the easy ones give me the toughest time. Give me back my HP. Alright, the good thing about the taking this path is that you can pretty much sneak past all of these um, skeleton masses that shoot what you call it, they shoot the spikes at you, they don't frenzy you but still I think there are madman's knowledges on both sides of this um, little platform here I'd prefer not to aggro them luckily I don't think they're responding good oops, didn't mean to roll Whatever. Yeah, it's both madman's knowledge. I should really use this, but now, see, on my first playthrough, I at least had some use for the um, madman's knowledge because I needed to buy bolt paper and fire paper. Now that I have the empty phantasm shell, it's even more useless than, I mean, insight, spending insight, than it already was. I could get Henrik's set, but uh, it's kind of that weird yellow color. Not my style. At least for this character. This is such a good cutscene. I'm gonna watch it again. There it is. That red moon. And there's space. I guess kind of. It looks like space. Yeah, this this guy is pretty much the gaping rotten rotten dragon. That's pretty much what it is. It is like the exact 50-50 combination of those two bosses. But yeah, it's time to empty Phantasm Shell this bitch. Pretty much, I think the other hunters, Hunter's tools are useless. Are gonna be useless in this fight. And by the way, I think the lore... I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think the lore does imply that... This guy is basically made out of the corpses of all the Mansis scholars. Like all those guys you, we see scattered around. That's what this guy is made of. So, of course, it's... Time to take out these sorcerers, sorceresses. Did that, one, that one didn't die, did it? That's what I'll do. I can one-shot them like this. Things are going to be much easier. Yeah, I don't... I'm not going to risk knocking them off. Hey, thanks for the quicksilver. Quicksilver bullets. Still don't exactly know what they do to this boss. I know that he gains that AoE once you take out all the sorceresses, but honestly, I prefer it this way. I don't want to be shot at from all angles. I guess what you could do is leave one of them alive, and that would work. I did still leave one alive, didn't I? No, I didn't. Now, the last time I was here, 
um, I did not exploit one of the weaknesses of this boss. I only figured it out when I defeated it. And that weakness is the fact that there is that head, kind of like the main body of this boss, that's like extremely weak to... Oh, are you fucking kidding me? I hate this attack. That's the one that gets me. It comes out of nowhere. It, there are like no forewarnings at all that he's gonna do that. I do like hate this boss a lot. Just because it takes so long to get back to him. And because you have to take out those sorceresses every single time. What can you do? What can you do? I gotta remember to send the elevator. Well, I can't because I jump off the elevator. I'm gonna do this one more time on screen. And then we're gonna go start cutting after this. Because I'm not gonna waste the entire episode just showing the runbacks to this boss. I think you get the idea of what to do. Oh. I still feel like I'm really weak in terms of the damage I do to it. I felt like a lot more powerful. I think it's because I'm getting no scaling from this weapon. That's why I'm so weak. But you know, that's the kind of build I'm going for. We do have other paths to explore. I can always go to Kanehurst, which I'm gonna do after this. So we still have Kanehurst as an option. We still have the Upper Cathedral Ward. And I think that's about it. But yeah. Luckily this is like not a load, load screen at all. We can just skip past. Not even gonna take this one out. We're just gonna take off. Actually, this run back isn't as bad as I thought, or, or as I remembered. I think it's because I did it so many times that I think it's longer than it actually is. So yeah, I'm back, bitches. Alright, alright, alright. Should I try it with the sorceresses? Let's do it. You know what? Let's not. Let's not. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk it. The stupid bells. Got it. F that R2 attack of this weapon is so satisfying. S Bam. The other R2 is satisfying as well. Maybe I should j try flaming him. I think he is weak to fire. I think a lot of these corpse enemies in Souls games are weak to fire. I do wonder if there is a way to cheese this guy. I don't think you can get that many Molotov cocktails though. So you, you can just like lob it at him from up here. Pretty sure it's impossible to poison him. Like poison knives wouldn't work. He's gonna do it. Yeah. Let's try this. Oh, shit. Now that's the kind of damage I want to see. That's the kind of damage I expected. Ouch. Never really got hit by that attack. Fuck. It's so slow I shouldn't get hit by that. You know what? We're gonna go right here. I mean, that's decent damage. Oh, shit. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I need to do. This is the weak spot of this guy. I'm afraid he's gonna do the AoE. That's the attack that gets me. Because unlike the gaping dragons um, acid attack or whatever, this one... This one actually deals damage. I think the gaping dragons just destroys your equipment. Did I stun it again? Oh, this is not the head, is it? Yes, it is. I'm not gonna anti empty Phantasm Shell because it's gonna take too long. You know what? We're making a tactical retreat. And healing up. Alright. 
I can get this guy on second try. That would be good. Oh, he can hit me from in here. Well, not really, but... Well, technically he can. Ouch. Those little feet look so ridiculous. Oh, shit. Come on, please die. Just don't AOE me, because that's gonna... That's what, that's what gets, gets me. Uh, that's what gets me. And it's dead. It's dead. Second try. That wasn't so bad. Okay, this boss maybe isn't as bad as I remembered it to be. Alright. Thank you, Empty Phantasm Shell. Maybe my damage isn't as bad. I know that this boss has a lot of HP. Alright, let's get the hell back to the Hunter's Dream. Okay, cool, cool. I'm 11 minutes in. I think the next stop on our list is Kanehurst Castle, which means first we have to get to Yosefka's clinic. Alright. Well, we can definitely level up after that. Yeah, let's channel these blood echoes and let's bump up to 30. Arcane. I'm only 10 levels away, which seems like a lot. But we should be able to get there. Alright, we gotta go to the Forbidden Woods. I think that's the closer one. Just trying to think of the quickest way there. Yeah, I think this is it. So yeah, we're going to Yosefka's, then to Kanehurst. Honestly, Kanehurst should be pretty easy to clear out. I'm only there for the Executioner Glove and the... People have told me to get the night set because apparently the female version of it looks very cool. I'll take out I'll, I'll I will take out Martyr Logarius because I need all the souls we can get, but I'll probably leave that until I have a plus ten weapon. Yeah, I am dealing a lot of damage. I was worried about my damage, but I think See, the thing about this arcane guide is that I'm getting a lot of good gemstones, really powerful ones. That kind of balances out the fact that I don't get as much scaling. I also need to unlock the, what you call it, the Nightmare Frontier. I'll do that too, in a while. There is no hurry, really. All I gotta do is get to that 30... Oh, these guys are out? Get to that... Oh, fuck. That's that poise, or lack thereof, in this game. Really screw you over. Okay, here we go. This little cave... First of all, there are items down here. Antidotes. Which kind of gives you an idea of what there, what is awaiting you. Actually, you know what? We'll take this off because we don't need this. I will get the Beast Roar and the Tiny Tenitris back. And the Antidotes. Mainly the Antidotes. I'm not even going to engage anything that's in here. Mainly because the items down here aren't really that good, even. I'm just going to go... Oh! Well, that's cool. That's All of these are the poison gemstones, by the way. And that's it, we're through. Yeah, not a difficult area at all. How this connects to Yosefka's clinic, that beats me. Because it doesn't even look like these areas are remotely close to each other. But, you know, it's not as bad as Iron Keep and Earthen Peak. That's the one that really annoys a lot of people, including me. All right. Lots of ladders to climb. This feels like fucking Metal Gear Solid 3. 
That that's a game with that long ladder section. It's been ages since I played that game. Never really got too far into it. The problem was I started playing that game when I was like I think I was like thirteen. Which I didn't really appreciate the weirdness of Metal Gear. I'm gonna go back eventually. I do want to buy that HD collection. First of all, I'm interested really in Metal Gear Solid 5. That one is definitely... I'm gonna definitely get that as soon as it comes out. Oh yeah, these ones take so little damage. Except when you pancake them. They don't like that, do they? Okay, Madman's Knowledge. I guess we'll get all, all four of the umbilical cords in this playthrough. Yeah, there are th there are four actually, even though you only need three. Um, It's kind of like... I guess they have one as backup, in case you screw one of them up. Because the Ari Ariana questline can be screwed up. I screwed it up on my first playthrough too. So... I guess that's why they have a backup. Oh fuck. Got trapped in the corner there. It's a problem that I can't one-shot these guys and they're gonna kill me. That's embarrassing. Killed by these guys. Oh well, they don't like fire, do they? That's for sure. Don't need the antidotes anymore. What I do need, on the other hand, is the torch. This area gets very dark. You get insight for coming into Yusefka's clinic. Who do we have there? Hey, it's one of these aliens. Hey there. You're dead. Yusefka's blood vial, yeah. See, it kind of always feels weird. There, there it is, the Kaner summons. That Yosefka's blood is kind of like this yellow piss color. Yeah. Kind of giving you a hint that Yosefka is not all that she seems to be. Anyways, we still have this place to explore. This one, I really love the atmosphere of this place. Kind of creepy. It's almost like you can really see the gothic horror influences in the game by going through this place. Kind of like this like weird... 18th century operating room like dissecting aliens yeah this game is awesome communion that's the one that gives you more blood vials i think so yeah the atmosphere in this game definitely 10 out of 10 on the whole i really love this game if you couldn't tell before okay I think From Software would make would be able to make a really good horror game if they ever decided to branch out into other things. I would definitely play the shit out of a FromSoft horror game. And here we go. This is Yosefka, who I was kind of afraid to kill the first time I came through here. Let's see if we can... She's like freaking out. Anyways, the idea here is that the Great Ones are basically impregnating certain people. One of them is Yusefka here. And the other one is Ariana, who will return to eventually. But right now, that's not what we're really here for. I forget, can you open the door back at Kanehurst? Not Kanehurst, what am I talking about? Back at the entrance here? I think you can. Because I'll just go out that way then. Easy to get to the lamp. I think you should be able to open this. Yes, yes you can. Alright. So we are gonna head back into the Hunter's Dream. And, well, 25,000 souls, I can actually gain a level. So I'll probably do that. And there it is. It's basically like the 
Yosefka's Blood Vial is like the replenishment spell in that it restores HP and then continues giving you more HP. Anyways, we need endurance. I'm going for endurance because this weapon takes a lot of it. And we might as well do Kanehurst. We're going to warp to the Witch's Abode. I think that's the closer one. The Kaner Summons is a really cool item too. I'm gonna read its description in a little bit. Just like the thought that goes into all of these item descriptions is really cool. Let's see, I think it's in the key items. Yes. An old bloodstained summons inviting an honored guest to the Forsaken Castle Kanehurst. Rather bafflingly, it is addressed to you. Do not hesitate, the stagecoach leaves from Hanvik Crossing. But what's really awesome about this is you can definitely tell that this whole Kanehurst thing is borrowed from like Dracula and all that shit. Just, you know, like getting this weird old letter and then going to this abandoned castle. And the whole process of how you get to Kanehurst is similar. Anyways, we have these enemies here who... Did I not collect that item there? It doesn't matter, it's probably something very, like, weak at this point. Anyways, blood vials, blood vials, I'll take all of that. Yeah, it's a madman's knowledge. Alright, I'll just go. Well, you know what? He can fight you. You give blood vials too. Ouch. That's like, wow, I'm trapped. Spin to win. God, I'm playing like shit against this guy. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm about to get killed by this asshole. Let's just go. I think once... Do you have to... We might have to clear out this area, though. No, you don't. That's so cool. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. Alright, we're taking off. Sorry enemies, we're just gonna leave you here. Yeah, this whole Kanehurst entrance thing has got to be my favorite cutscene in this game. And of course, if you look back, the horses are dead, the bridge is destroyed. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it really, it really is weird how, if you look over there, that's basically where Bergenworth is. That's where, that's where we came from. And then this place is all frozen. Yeah, it's probably Martyr Logarius, that tricky asshole. It's probably the one that causes this. 
Anyways, it's very important that you hit this lamp. You can actually permanently lock yourself out of Kanehurst if you don't activate this lamp and you die. Yeah, that's definitely not fun. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode here. Wanna thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Bloodborne, the ultimate arcane guide, and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.